Hey guys, so this is me from the future. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I had to shoot this video in a rush um, because Thomas needed his blue box back or uh, rather I uh, needed to bring it to uh, Academy of Tone, uh, which uh, by the way, thank you for all the positive comments. Uh, yeah, you guys made my day. Um, hello to the new subscribers. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you for being here. Uh, it really means a lot. Um, so, because I had to do this video in a rush, um, I totally forgot to, uh, to record an opening song. Um, that's what I want to do, you know, like in front of every demo, I want to uh, create a little piece of music. Um, yeah, uh, totally forgot it. And, uh, now I don't have a blue box anymore. So I thought the best thing would be, uh, to go through the demo and I took all the riffs. I almost played in time <laughs> long enough, uh, yeah, to record a piece of music too. So, um, yeah, don't be too hard on uh, timing, musicianship. Uh, I'm not a good drummer. Uh, it's MIDI drums only, but yeah. Um, I've done my best to uh, give you guys a little intro and I think it might work out. Um, and I might just leave in all the, all the pieces I recorded, so. Uh, yeah, my bass player Jonas joined me. Great bass player, so yeah. Uh, be sure to stay tuned and check it out. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have fun with the video. Bye bye. Hey, guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Manuel Bastian, and today I'm gonna show you the Blue Guitar Blue Box. Down, tie him on a down Lock your daddy out the door So I don't need him nosing around Tie him on a down Tie him on a down Give me all your love Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, first of all, Happy New Year. Um, yeah, let's hope for a great 2024. Um, yeah. Uh, let's pray for peace and yeah, that a lot of bullshit uh, disappears. Um, yeah. Um, a couple days ago, uh, Thomas Plug visited me. Um, yeah, he wanted to check out my my M collection. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna be in a live stream um, with him um, in uh, Academy of Tone um, tomorrow. So by the time this airs, um, you can watch it on YouTube. It's uh, episode uh, 190. So uh, if you want to check that out, Academy of Tone 190. I can't wait to, uh, yeah, to visit Thomas and, uh, yeah, check out his amp collection, his guitar collection. 
uh, yeah, and talk guitars and amps and uh, vintage sounds. Uh, can't wait for that. We had we have a lot of the the same influences, so yeah, it's gonna be fun. Um, yeah, and when he uh, came over to visit, um, he left me the the blue box. Uh, because I told him I was interested in it. Um, I think it's a really cool concept. Um, it's basically an uh, IR loader, but you can't load your own impulse responses into it. It's uh, basically um, Thomas's uh, cabinet collection. Um, so there's a lot of uh, fine vintage Marshall caps in there and um, great um, fender cabinets and yeah um, and you know I thought uh, like everyone uses it with the with the M1 um, and I'm gonna do something different today I'm gonna show you how it sounds with my Vintage amps, um, because yeah, vintage cabinets, vintage amps should be a great pair. Um, yeah, and I'm excited for this test actually because I've tried impulse responses, but I never liked them that much. Uh, at least not as much as uh, my ISO cap uh, with the mic up Celestion in it. Um, I never liked the camper that much, but I actually uh, got myself a Tonex um, to try it out. So, yeah, there's a lot of situations where um, a quiet solution makes tons of sense, uh, you know. Um, I play a lot of, uh, a lot of duo gigs. Where I play uh, drums with my feet and uh, Jonas, a uh, friend of mine, which you can check out on this channel as well, uh, great bass player. Um, yeah, he plays the bass and we both sing and I play electric, acoustic guitar and drums with my feet. Um, in that setting, like uh, something like a Tonex or a uh, Helix or camper uh, or a real amp with uh, something like the blue box makes total sense you know and I just never and I, ma I, I even made I even uh, went the, the, the long road and made my own impulse responses um, off my ISO cap with my mic plant which I normally use um, yeah, but, you know, like, I feel there's always a little bit missing, but, you know, if it's really a quiet and handy solution and it gets you there, let's say 95%, that's a, a, a great deal, you know. So, um, yeah, I won't go on talking um, I'll just show you what this this thing sounds like you know um, yeah I'm playing my 1966 uh, Stratocaster um, into my N audio amp switcher the 8x7 which is a great piece of gear if you're in the market for an amp switcher makes life so much easier, let me tell you. So, let's start with my 1970 Fender Bandmaster Reverb, which has a, a huge um, output tranny of a Super Reverb in it. So it sounds a little bit more beefy. And yeah, let's uh, check what uh, we can pair it with. Um, 
you know, like we should go with the black face 4 by 10, the black 4 by 10. Um, yeah, I think this is Thomas's um, super reverb cabinet. So should make for a good combination. Let's check it out. <laughs> Right away, I hear those gong, 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 those uh, Stevie Ray mids. Uh, yeah. Um. <laughs> That sounds great right out of the box. Um, you have a mic position dial which you can uh, turn towards the edge of the cone or the center of the cone. Um, it will basically make the oh, and it's it's got a nice uh, middle uh, detention right there. Is it the right word? Detention? I don't know. Detent? Middle detent? I don't know. Um, so, if you, yeah, let's turn it more towards the edge, makes the sound more dark. All the way down to or let's hear the middle position again it's pretty bright but you can make it even brighter <laughs> like I would never use it in that setting but you know it's good to have the flexibility if you have a very dark sounding amp um, you can get, I'm sure, great sounding tones out of it. Um, let me put it back in the middle, play a little more. That's where I would put it probably for that sound. Great. Um, let me try uh, the tremolo works. Ah, there we go. And let me turn up the reverb a little more. Let's 
play something in A. There are two more blackface cabinets. Let's go for the the blackface 210. That's uh, what like, is that like, like a tremolox reverb or something? You know. Let's put it back in the middle. A little bit more hollow, less mids. I'm I'm losing track of time here. Uh, that never happened to me with an impulse response, to be honest. Um, yeah, sounds great. Uh, let's go for the the two twelve. I guess that's like a twin reverb. <laughs> Thank you. 
I actually like the the two the two ten better. But I don't like twins, to be honest. Uh, at least, you know, I haven't played a twin and thought, ah, oh, that's my sound. So. Um, it's a little bit on the harsh side. Let me turn off the the tremolo. Maybe turn down the reverb just a little bit. <laughs> Surf City. Yeah, even that one sounds great, you know, like for me at least it's always like changing caps isn't fun for the ear, you know, uh, because a whole lot changes in little time, you know, <laughs> and your ears have to get used to the sound. Yeah, but uh, now I even like that tone. Um, let's go for the silver 1x12. I think that's Thomas's... Um, uh, Princeton. I think he has a Princeton silver face with a with a 12 12 inch speaker in it. You know, uh, let me try. I have a a, a, a little. Um, 68 Fender Champ here, um, and since the the Princeton is a smaller a smaller amp, um, okay, I had to check something with my switching. Um, yeah, I'm playing the the Champ in into a 16 ohm cabinet, so it's totally mismatched. Uh, it won't hurt old fenders. Don't try that with a Marshall or a Vox or anything. Uh, but I feel safe uh, to do it with my, with my champ. So. Here's the, the Princeton Silver.
Great sound as well. Great too. Yeah. Um, extra points for anyone who knows what that tune is. Put it down in the comments. Let's crank the champ to 10. Yeah, I just have to smell a little bit. <laughs> Um, let's go for the Tweet 112. It should sound great with a, with a cranked champ. Sounds great. Another famous jam song, supposedly. Thank you. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I was really afraid uh, I was going to have to say, I was going to have to tell Thomas, uh, you know, that I don't like it. Um, but I never, uh, I, I don't think I've ever played that much in a video in one setting. Um, I'm totally vibing, so uh, yeah. So I guess this means uh, this uh, this thing sounds really, really good. Um, okay, uh, that was pretty much the, the Fender world. Um, like we can check out the, the chess chorus. Probably won't sound really good with the with the champ, but yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't have to show you like every single sound in there. Um, yeah, let's check out the the fat cap with the champ. Not a great sound. Let's go for the nano cap. Yeah, it has that small boxy feel uh, like a champ. It's a great. Great sound for the champ. Let's crank it one more time. Oh man, listen to that.
Man, I'm sold. <laughs> I think uh, everything Thomas touches sounds killer. Um, <laughs> of course, we have the same sound philosophy, you know, like he plays old strats and he loves vintage amps. So, yeah, why wouldn't I like this? Um, okay, let's go for... Uh, Let's go for uh, my AC30 and let's put it in the in the Bulldog in the Bulldog 2x12. Oh man, I hope that thing recorded. Um, yeah, let's go for the Bulldog 2x12 with the AC30. <laughs> Okay. So AC30. Um, in a mix that might sound great. Uh, right now I feel it's a little on the bright side. Yeah, and right away we get like that boxy mid-range uh, you get from an old AC30, you know. And right away, another great sound. <laughs> I mean... Uh, what can I say? Uh, except for... Thomas left me... His... Uh, original... Dallas Rangemaster. And as long as I... Have it, and as long as I have the, the AC30 dialed up, I mean Brian May um, uh, puts his guitar in the normal channel, but here's the top boost channel, anyways. <laughs>
I think it's in, in F. Brian Mayish to me, you know. Great sound. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm a little bit lost for words right now. <laughs> this much in a video. Uh, okay, let's go for some for some Marshall sounds. So here's my uh, 1967 Marshall JTM50. Yeah, great sounding amp. Um, and here's a cabinet called 
uh, stack 76. Let me see if I have to like the correct one. Yeah. Okay. Stack seven. Uh, stack 67. Sorry. So here's my Marshall with a stack 67 sound. <laughs> So let me fiddle with the knobs a little bit. Uh, yeah, so something like that maybe. That sounds like a plexi to me, like a well mic'd uh, killer plexi, yeah. I could play for hours. And I mean, the mic position knob, like, that's really a, a huge advantage over like an impulse response loader because. You know, there are impulse responses with, you know, like different mic positions, different microphones, but uh, if you're anything like me, like I get, um, I want knobs to fiddle around. I don't like uh, playing with stuff on, on my computer and uh, 
I get option paralysis, paralysis and um, you know, I have knobs, I can fiddle, I can, yeah, it's so easy. You know, uh, like the sound was too dark for me right now on the neck pickup, so yeah, just uh, turn it towards the center of the cone and there you go. <laughs> Sounds great. Um, let's check out uh, the Stack 65, which is, uh, I believe, like one of the, the earliest uh, Marshall caps with the uh, Elnico speakers. Not a great sound, you know. Sounds great, let's check out the Stack 1970. A little bolder. Everything just sounds authentic, you know? Mm -hmm. 
And, ah, uh, you know I'm a vintage guy. Uh, yeah. I usually prefer like a cabinet and a mic in front of it, but no, this gives you <laughs> tons of great sounding vintage caps and yeah, I mean, with the flick of a switch, <laughs> let's check out Stack 71. That's harsh. That might not be my favorite cabinet. But yeah, it reminded me of that sound somehow. You know, like, you can't like every cabinet on the planet, but like, even that one sounds authentic. It's not my favorite sound in the world, but... Uh, Stack 81! Uh, and I think that would be a great time to switch it to the... to my Chase M800. Fiddle with the sound a little bit. Sounds great, and I mean, you could, uh, like that's another advantage, uh, you can record with this thing in the middle of the night, you know, uh, 
I mean, get a good load box. Uh, <laughs> crazy. Um, guys, I won't uh, keep you that much longer, but I have to show you like a heavy sound. And for that, I switch to my amp one in the classic channel and let me go for a vintage 30 speaker. to think of a, uh, of a song to play. Uh. All it is was in movie. Too big to see Time and space never ending Disturbing thoughts, questions pending Limitation of human understanding Too quick to criticize Obligation to survive We hunger to be alive I mean, doesn't that sound great? Classic lead 80. Guys, um, as you can see, I'm flabbergasted. Um, yeah, if you're a vintage guy like me and you don't like IRs, um, be sure to at least give this thing a try. I mean, uh, I came here, wanted nothing. <laughs> uh, yeah, and now I gotta buy one of those. Uh, yeah, thank you, Thomas. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, heads off, I'm totally blown away. Uh, I think I got some great sounds today. Um, yeah, it's a pretty long video by now. Uh, guys, if you're still here, thanks for sticking around. Um, please consider subscribing to my channel, uh, like. Give me a thumbs up and comment. Uh, follow me on Instagram, TikTok. Um, yeah, all the good stuff. Um, yeah. Check out Blue Guitar because their stuff is amazing. And, you know, I, that's what I told Thomas when he was here. Uh, like the only modern amp I use like it's the THC and the, the, the blue guitar, M1. Uh, that really goes for something. Um, 
be sure to check their stuff out. Guys, uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one and I'll see you around. Till next time. Bye bye.